in the reading he talks about the ogre types that come into play and I want to show you a little bit how uh, engine riders get their own types. It's really not that difficult. They essentially define new types based off of existing types, which is what we do when we make a class, except a type def is even simpler. So a type def, well, for example, I could say a uh, float, my float gets six, and let's do double, my double gets a six as well, whatever. Um, as a programmer, I have to memorize the size of these types based off the platform I'm targeting on my specific machine. A float is 32 bits, a double is 64 bits, and there's no way, it's not very explicit, I just have to remember that both of these are floating point types, it just happens that the double is twice as large or wide as the float type. Well, so a lot of programmers, game engines, things like that, they'll, they'll be a little more explicit. They, they don't feel comfortable with that. So they want, well, instead what they want to say is float32, which is extremely explicit. It says, I know that this should be a float32. And, and this, it's still a floating point type. It's just double is double what a float is. So, so this will be a float64. Well, on my particular machine, I need to define these types, and I could make a class or a struct or what you're used to, but instead I can just define these types based off existing types. So I can say type def. Type def, I'm defining a new type, um, float, uh, that will be my float32. And type def, type def, uh, double, well, that will be my float64. So when the compiler now sees float 64, it knows to actually use double instead. So these are a little bit like an alias. Um, we can also do this with int. Say I want to do a uh, unsigned int, and it can get quite nasty saying uh, unsigned, oops, unsigned int, big int, whatever, gets some value. And this can get unruly, typing unsigned int, unsigned int, unsigned int. And again, int means it's an integer type, but it doesn't really tell me much about the size of the actual um, RAM that I'm claiming from either the stack or the heap. So again, we can just type def, type def, um, int, let's type def it to a u30, or er, uh, unsigned int, unsigned int, uh, all lowercase, I'm hitting control u to do the lowercase thing, uh, u32, so type def unsigned int, so now uh, instead of saying unsigned int everywhere, I can say u32, and that works as well. Well. Another advantage to doing type defs is I have declared or defined the type in one location. So if all over my code I use float32, 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 and then I target a different platform, and it just so happens that uh, float actually is a 64-bit or whatever, I, basically this is incorrect for a different platform, all I need to do is change it right here. I don't have to go through all my code and replace all the floats with doubles or things like that. I, I just change it once and it cascades throughout the entire code. So that's another advantage to doing this. Um, uh, another advantage that I can think of would be with function pointers. They can be very unruly to declare and define and use, and they're ugly. Um, we'll get into function pointers later, but type def cleans that up for us quite nicely, and, and we'll see that. So that's that's the simple type def. And so when you look at the reading with the ogre types and it has U32 and those kind of things, all they're doing is type-defing their types so things are consistent.